Hmm. Okay. Today's little uh, project, we have a citron cow. Um, Frisian edition, I believe. 2008 model from memory. Um, yeah. Welcome to Norfolk. So anyway, the uh, what is this? Citroen, Citroen 106? No, a Peugeot. Peugeot 106. Citroen Igo. Toyota Igo. Toyota Igo. Citroen. Um, whatever it is. Anyway, you know what these things are. I'll think. I'll think of the name in a minute. Um, so let's see what fault codes we've got. We've got basically um, a no start situation. So if we uh, crank the car, we're going to get crank an engine, but no start. It's fairly common on these. Um, normally it's a B2799 or B2795 fault, but today is a little bit different. What we're going to do, we're going to scan the car in the topology. Uh, we're using a uh, Think Tool Max here. It's quite a good little scanner. I use it quite a bit in the shop. Let's uh, see what we've got. We have no fault codes in the engine management system. And we have, as you can see there, we have no communication with the IMO. Now the normal B2795, 2799 fault, we can correct that. Um, but we don't have that. We're going to have a look in your engine ECU and see what fault codes we've got. Same, it's clear. Now that's unusual. I thought I had a different fault code earlier. Let's read the fault codes. Right, that's clear. So that was scanning it under Toyota. Um, we're now going to try scanning it under something else. Um, it's a Citroen C1. It's not a Citroen Cow. Um, we're going to go back and let's see if we can scan it another way and see what we come up with. Right, so uh, this time we're going to go into a Citroen instead of Toyota, even though it's a Toyota Igo. Underneath it's Citroen jacket. It's a furry cow Citroen jacket. Right, Citroen C1. Um, I think it's a B0 model. Uh, we don't have the chassis number. So we are going to do a scan on this one. Uh, gonna let it do its scan and then um, we'll get back to you when it's ready. Right, that's done its thing. 100% scanned. Now this time we, like I say, we're under Citroen C1. And we're gonna go this time into the engine ECU. See what it says under Citroen. See, under Citroen we have this fault code. It doesn't come up under an IGO, so it's always worth checking um, vice versa. If you're not getting any fault codes under Citroen C1, try under IGO, try an IGO under a Citroen, and you might get something. Now, A799, remote, uh, remote fault, no communication with the immobilizer control module. So first thing we're going to do is do the usuals, check the fuses, check the wiring, and then we're going to see if the immobiliser is scrambled, which is something we have to do quite often. So uh, I'll get back to you if we find anything more interesting in a minute. Right, so to check the fuses in one of these, they're heading in a very strange place. They're actually um, behind the cluster here. First thing to do is turn the steering wheel, and you see that screw there, and that screw there have got to come out. I'll get them out and I'll show you the next step. Those fuses are out. Now this uh, pod has to be ugh, sticky. This pod has to be lifted up and taken out like so. With the pod off there, we can then see round the back of the cluster and we can see our fuses. Now that side, and also they are that side. So first thing we're going to do is check those. If you haven't got one of these, I would highly recommend getting one. It's the 
quickest thing to check fuses with. You um, have a point there to stab in at the back of the fuse and then you have to earth yourself. I'm um, going to earth myself just by touching the, the door latch there. And then with the metal part of this, I'm going to just touch it onto the fuse and go the other side. And then if it's blown, you won't get a beep on one side. You will on the live side, but not on the uh, device side. How good is this little gadget? Quicker than a power probe, which is a good tool. Right, I'm probably not going to be able to video myself this side. Right. See that? That's me earthing myself out. So next thing to do is take the immobiliser out. Now, to get the immobiliser out, we have to take this whole dash out. Okay, the whole thing. But don't worry, it's not a big job. I'm going to show you how to do it, and uh, I'll have it out in a few minutes on video. So, let's start by uh, taking the cluster out. One screw there, one screw there. I think they're 12 mil. And uh, like I said, that clearly 10 mil. Right, now they're out. The cluster lifts up off its pegs. And behind here, there's a load of multi plugs to take out. So one by one, we're going to take these out. Now I'll only go in one way, so you don't have to worry too much about marking them or anything. So uh, let's get that out. There. All of the multi plugs are out. And that's the cluster. The um, reason there's so many fuses and so many multi-plugs, there's some more fuses here. Uh, you can see none of those are blown and uh, not for the immobiliser anyway. But the reason there's so many plugs and so many fuses is this is actually like a body control module on these. They don't have a separate BCM as far as I'm aware. Um, it's all in that little unit so uh, don't drop it. There's a speaker grill that has to come out here. Um, don't know how I'm going to show you how to get that out. I'm just uh, using a trim tool and I'm just sliding it in to uh, relieve that. And it just pops out. So that's a little uh, speaker grill bit. She's out. The reason we take that out is these two uh, nuts have got to come out. Sorry, bolts have got to come out for the speaker. Um, let's get those out. With the speaker out of the equation, you can see there's a, a nut on a stud. Come on, focus. There, let's zoom in. Whoop. That nut there has got to come out, and there's one of them on both sides. Okay, both speaker grills are out both sides. There's now um, a small screw to take out, a little Phillips one just under there on the dash. These A-pillar trims need to uh, come out as well. So to get those out, just slide a trim tool down, pop it out, and then wriggle it up. That one's out. Take one off both sides. So now we move on to this uh, centre part. We've got to take off this button here. That just uh, slides on. And there's one screw, one screw just under there, another Phillips. So we're going to take that one out. Okay, with that one out, this uh, front part, we just have to use like a trim tool and gently but firmly pop this front panel off. Right, I've just released that, I needed two hands. So this will pop forward now and uh, we can pull the stereo out there. And then we've got two more screws to take out, one which is behind here, and one which is just there. 
The airbag on the passenger side has to be unplugged. They've got this little fella here. Hello, I'm looking after it. So underneath here, you'll see the plug for the airbag there that has to come out. And there's a 12 mil headed bolt there that holds the airbag in. And then the airbag lifts out um, with the dash all in one. To release the airbag plug, it's uh, easier, easier in my opinion, to um, release these two side tabs, pull the uh, whole connector down, and this little white uh, sliding lever has to be pulled back and it comes out. Now the dashboard is free to uh, pop up, like so. Now, that was me beeping the horn. She's nearly out. Right. Now for the good bit. The dash is now free to be lifted up, slid forward, and taken out of the car. And there we have it, the whole dashboard is out. And now I'm gonna show you where the immobilizer is. So the first time you do one of these, you might play hide and seek with the immobilizer and it'll beat you every time. The immobilizer is, so just to get some context, there's the steering wheel. And if you look right down here, That's where the screw is that holds the immobilizer in. Okay, just there, that little screw. Um, I'm gonna get the laser pointer on it to guard you to it. That one there, that's a screw that you have to take out. This is the bracket, and you can uh, only just see the back of the immobilizer unit just there on the back of that galvanized bracket. It's a five-sided tamper-proof Torx. So let's just show you the end of a tamper-proof Torx. So that's a five-sided tamper-proof Torx um, driver. So we're gonna take that screw out. Um, it's really difficult to get to, bear with me. To get better access to the screw head, I'm uh, just gonna take this bracket off here that holds uh, the wiring. Right, with that removed, right, we just move. We can get this up out of the way, and we can see that bracket a lot better. I want to slide the driver onto that. Right. This is the trickiest part of the operation. That's the screw out, and that's what the head looks like. Five-sided tamper-proof Torx. This is what the driver looks like. So um, six-sided is no good. Got to be five-sided. Got to be tamper-proof. It's T25 or. TS25 actually for the five sided tamper proof. So um, I'm using one about so long, and uh, on the end, I just put a little um, ratchet because I can't get a screwdriver hole in there, a whole screwdriver handle in there, and uh, that's how to get it out. So now we've got that part out. Say hello to my little immobilizer friend. Uh, we're going to take it off with the bracket. There's a little release tab there to get the, uh, the plug out. It'll be a two-hand job. Right, and there we have our immobilizer. That's what it looks like. Not to be confused with the central locking box. The central locking box is very similar, but it's no good to us. 
doesn't help your immobilizer at all. That does central locking. This does the immobilizer. Right, so let's get it on the bench and see what we can find. So we've got the immobilizer unit all stripped down. We're now going to take the data chip off. give it a clean and have a read of it. Right, so now the data chip is off, we're going to drop it in the adapter. Connect it up through a reading and programming tool. Then we're going to read the data. And then we're going to save it and uh, have a look at the file. Right, initially everything doesn't look too bad there, it doesn't look too scrambled. We're going to test the file now. We're now using a different tool to test the file. Now I've opened it up and it appears to be a verified file. So we're going to drop in one of the keys and we're going to investigate the key. And it knows that that's key number two. And it knows that that is key number one. So uh, that key file all looks good. I will substitute the file for a known good one and try it. Um, but it looks to be a dead immobilizer. So uh, a bit more testing needed on that. Okay, so that's the immobilizer all back together. Uh, I've put a known good file into it. Uh, I don't think that that's the problem with this one. I think it's going to be either wiring or a dead immobilizer unit. But let's pop it back on the car and see if anything is different. Right, so the MO and cluster are back in. Um, don't think this is going to fix it. Right, key is in, ignition is on. It won't start now anyway because um, we've put a virgin file with the keys programmed into it. We would normally have to uh, go through a sequence to code that in. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to scan it anyway and I'm going to see if we've got comms now with the immobilizer or condemn the immobilizer. Okay, so we're going to scan it again under Toyota. And we're going to do a smart scan. This is one we want this one now to communicate. Is it going to communicate in the IMO? Still no fault, still no communication with the IMO and Toyota. But now we definitely have a different symptom. We now have. We now have it firing, whereas it would only crank before. Right, so we have. No start situation. We do have a fire on it, which uh, we didn't have before and I really don't know why. Um, it's actually been a few days since I've last worked on this car and I've managed to nip to a local breakers yard and get an immobiliser. So now what we're going to do, we're going to plug in the immobiliser and then we're going to just do another scan of it and just check for comms. Now we haven't programmed this to the car, so it isn't going to start. But let's see what happens when we plug it in. Right, replacement of mobiliser is now plugged in. We're not going to bolt it down. We're just going to do a quick scan. So we need ignition on. Out of interest, let's see what happens with this one. Now that one just cranks. We have no fire with that one. Uh, Let's get this fired up and see what we've got. Let's try Toyota. Okay, so we're now scanning through. This is the one we want to see some activity. We want to see some comms with this now. I've condemned the old immobiliser for having no comms. Can't find anything else wrong with the car, so uh, hopefully it's just an immo not communicating. Let's see. Yeah, we now have comms with the immo. So the good news is we now have comms with the MO, uh, B2795 fault code. Um, I'll read that. 
unmatched key code. It's because it's not for that car. But the good thing is we know that we can fix this in one of two ways. Uh, first way is either to clone the MO, which is what we're going to do to start with, and it should just burst into life. The second way is what well, I initially started this video for, the B2795 scrambled MO code, which um, we're going to do anyway, just to see what happens and to show you how that works. So uh, let's crack on and uh, get this immobilizer cloned. Right, one freshly cloned immobilizer, which uh, we're going to just plug in. And now, fingers crossed, it should just work. Let's see uh, what happens. Ignition. Let's crank and see what happens. It runs. We have a squeaky bell. Oh, let's turn that off. That's better. It runs. So just to recap, if you have no comms with your immobiliser, you need the cloning service and then all your original keys will work. It'll be back to how it was before it went wrong. Now, just for giggles, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the virginising service just to show you the difference in how uh, you start these up after you have a specific job done. The virginising service is for when they are scrambled and the cloning service is if you just have no comms. Let's get this virginised and show you what happens. So this time we've done it differently. We've, um, we've done the B2795, B2796 fault repair, which, uh, which we have to do when the immobilizers get scrambled. Basically we virginize the immobilizer box and add your key data to it. So once this is in, uh, you'll see it will no longer start because we've got to go through the process of coding it in. So let's see what happens anyway. There we go, it's now stopped. So, that's what happens when you um, have them virginized, but it's not coded in. It'll run for a few seconds. I'm surprised it runs that long. And then it dies. So, now what we've got to do is the coding process. So, uh, with our little guide here, we're gonna get our split pin. Oh, we're gonna have to take the, I have to take the diagnostic tool out to do this. Now, we uh, have to bridge those connectors. So there's four in from the top, four in from the bottom. So it's uh, that one and that one. Now, once they're in, we have to then turn the ignition on and wait. Now, we have to wait for exactly 30 minutes. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to set a timer and I'm going to come back in 30 minutes. I just want to show you something else. When it goes into this mode, you'll see that the um, airbag light should flash, indicating that it's on along with the ABS light. So we know that that is now coding in. Let's give it 30 minutes, come back and we'll see what happens. Okay, so the time has come. It's been exactly 30 minutes. There's nothing on the dash here that will tell you it's 30 minutes, so you do have to use your own timer. And don't do it 29 minutes and 59 seconds. You can also go too long. Um, I don't know what the time is, but as long as you're within 30 to 31 minutes, what you have to do now is switch the ignition off. <clears throat> Reach down here and pull out our little link pin. Cross your fingers, cross everything else, and see what happens. So, ignition on, and start. There we go. We have our running car again. Yep, just got to put all of this back together now. Uh, get the airbag light off, and uh, we'll call that one a success. So, thanks a million for watching this far. Um, now you know how to sort out your Toyota Igo immobilizer or a Citroen C1 immobilizer or a Peugeot 107 immobilizer. It's exactly the same car. Uh, I think we call it badge engineering. So if you need to get this done, you want to go online to ecuconnection.co.uk and order this service. And uh, just to recap, 
If you have no comms with your immobiliser, go for the cloning service. If you have a scrambled immobiliser, B2795, B2796, uh, go for the virginising service and uh, you'll read all about it on the website. So, the last thing for me to do is to say thanks for watching and click on the like and the subscribe buttons if you found this helpful. And uh, here's ECU Connection. One. If you have a faulty immobiliser on a Citroen C1, Peugeot 107 or Toyota Igo and you need it repaired, simply click on to ecuconnection.co.uk, click on the services and find the Toyota immobiliser unit for a Toyota Igo repair service that we do. Simply click on the service and select from the drop down menu whether you want the cloning service or if you want the virginising service which is for the B2799-2795 fault. We sell all throughout Europe and deliver within days. Simply add to basket when you are ready to place your order. Once you place your order, you can pay online and then send us your immobiliser unit and whatever working keys you have, or we can even make your new key transponders if you need, and it will be returned to you all working within a few days.